Hello scuba divers of YouTube and welcome back to our channel. If this is your first time here, a very warm welcome to what is quite possibly the biggest review video we've ever tried to pull together. Now back in February we were diving in the Philippines, we took a Sunto D5 with us, uh, we got back, we posted that review video, if you haven't seen it I'll post the link at the end of this video, but after we posted it we were inundated with people's thoughts and questions around how the Sunto D5 compares against the Shearwater Terek and the Garmin Descent Mark 1. Now we hadn't dived with either of the Terek or the Descent, so we weren't really very best place to answer. Uh, and that was kind of really the starting point of how this video got into planning. Um, we had a trip planned to Antigua at the end of May, uh, so a few calls to our friends over at Mike's Dive Store later, and we secured the ingredients for what is probably the biggest uh, wearable watch stroke dive computer review video to date. Now, to make things interesting, we were able to source a black Sunto D5, a Shearwater Terek, a Garmin Descent Mark I, the titanium version, and also this Ratio Eye Dive Color Easy with the yellow strap. All four units are wearable watches stroke dive computers, uh, and we really wanted to put them up against each other to see how they varied. Now, if I was to call out everything that these dive computers do, I would literally be sitting here talking for hours, and I'm pretty sure that you guys don't want to sit through a scuba version of War of the Worlds. So I'm going to focus on what I think are the main things uh, that a diver, whether you're new or you've already got a computer, uh, what you would look for when you are buying a dive computer. There are certainly things that are in my mind. Um, I've already s reviewed the Sunto D5 separately as a separate review video. Um, I will do the same for the other three in due course, but for now I'm going to focus on uh, some individual things. Now to try and make this a level of playing field as I possibly could, I had all four dive computers set to the same brightness setting. Uh, I had the Sunto D5 set to aggressive, obviously this runs the Sunto RGBM Fuse 2 algorithm, so this was set to aggressive. Uh, and the other three all run on Bullman, so I had their gradient factor set to 93 over 93. Now this is quite an aggressive profile, but it gave me uh, a quite an, an, an even feel to run all four of them at. And it was perfect for the recreational diving we were doing in Antigua it was all very chilled very relaxed I think the deepest I hit at any point in that week was about 20 meters uh, and it gave me a good opportunity to kind of try and compare the no dive limits at the same time uh, and it's also worth pointing out that I didn't just use these computers underwater as dive computers uh, because they are wearable watches I tried my best uh, to use them outside of the water as everyday watches uh, not just while I was away on holiday but also uh, in the run-up to the trip so I had a chance to try and get used to them I'm not really one for sitting down and reading a manual. I'd like to work things out to my, uh, at myself. Um, I'm sure there's things that I've missed in that process, but uh, I just kind of really wanted to give everyone a, the same chance, if you like. The D5, the Terek, and the Ratio are all air integrated and will all take multiple transmitters. I had a transmitter for each of these units, so this is the setup that I used on each dive. The Descent isn't air integrated, so a transmitter wasn't required. I fashioned up a bar using my underwater camera float arms and had it positioned in front of the camera so all units were always at the same depth. For the sake of this video we'll do a fun score chart at the end of each category. We'll score it four for the best and, and one for the worst. But please remember guys these are just my, my own thoughts and opinions based on doing a, a few dives in one week. Uh, with these four units. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have got your um, own opinions and I'm quite sure that a lot of you have used, that, that own any of these dive computers would have used them far more extensively than I have. I wanted to call this one out because it's a really basic but key thing for me. Personally, I'm always diving with a camera and I always have my Sinto still set up on the arm of my camera, on the float arm. Um, it's just that when I'm, um, when I'm filming, I can kind of glance across and see big, bold, bright numbers. And that's kind of what you want to see with a dive computer. You want to be able to glance at it and get the information that you need without having to like uh, look at it at a certain angle because you've got a bit of glare. What this video doesn't show is the true brightness of all the dive computers. I'll start with the obvious, the Terek. There's no question that this comes top out of the four. The big bold numbers were super clear. The screen just felt tidier too. There were no distracting arrows or coloured wheels around the edge of the face. I'm actually going to put the D5 in second place. The Sunto was clear and bright. I like the switch window value that you can customise, which I called out in the D5 review. But in general, it was just a nice bright screen. 
The ratio really surprised me of how bright the numbers were, but because it's a, a much smaller dive window screen, the numbers were quite skinny and I wanted them to be that little bit more bolder. I put the descent last as the numbers just seemed small for the size of the screen and just didn't shine like the others. Now there's nothing more annoying than being told by your dive computer that it's low on life either just before or during a dive. Pretty much all dive computers these days are rechargeable, they come with a USB charging cable uh, and they'll all give varying amounts of life per charge. However, with these four you're using them as wearable watches as well as dive computers uh, and don't forget I have all of these set to full brightness. I wasn't expecting it to, but the ratio must have the Duracell bunny inside it because it has blown the others out of the water. After five days of diving, using it as a general watch, it still had 63% of battery life in it, which is absolutely astounding. Close on its heels was a Terek on 55%. I've put the Garmin into third place because uh, I did have to give it a little top up when it got to 35%. But, and this is an absolutely huge but, I was definitely using the Descent more. I mean, this is a full on smartwatch. I had it connected to my smartphone. Um, I was playing around with the apps. There's like lots of customization you can do. I had it connected so that I was getting email notifications, text message notifications. You can obviously control music on your phone for it. So in all fairness, I was definitely, definitely using the Garmin more than I was the others because of the smartwatch functionality. Um, I'm pretty sure if I hadn't, then it would have been up there with the Terek. Uh, and in last place is the Sinto D5. The Sinto battery was a long way off the others. In fact, it was miles behind the others. Yes, I've got it in the brightest settings, but I've also got the other three in the brightest settings too. Uh, I was generally getting a low battery warning every single day, and we're only doing two dives a day. Uh, so if you're on a liverboard, you're definitely gonna need the settings um, on the lowest brightness setting if you don't wanna be charging it in between dives. Um, Sinto do state that you'll get up to 12 hours of dive time, and I'm assuming that will be on the lowest brightness setting but just to give you a comparison, the Shearwater Terrick give a guide uh, of 30 hours of dive time or 50 hours of using it as a watch. I would imagine that guide is also on a lower brightness setting, but that's just to kind of give you a comparison between the two. Gone are the days when your dive computer strap was a lump of molded plastic or silicon uh, with these big bulky cases around them uh, where you needed to get the kitchen utensils out to dig the back off to get to the little compartment to change the little disc battery. No, 2019 is all about customization. Leading the way, Garmin have this wrapped up in the descent with a myriad of strap options. There are leather straps, a range of coloured silicon dive straps, metal straps and also titanium. But what makes the descent my number one choice is the ease in changing straps with this simple clasp mechanism. It's also designed so it can't accidentally come undone when it's being worn. With the titanium model we have here, you obviously get the titanium strap uh, and both the short and long silicon dive straps in the box. The D5 is a close second, it too has a range of interchangeable colour straps of diving and also a material natal style strap plus a leather option but no metal style strap. The D5 strap is easily changed but slightly more fiddly than the Descent. The Terek falls into third place on this one. It does have a standard uh, watch band size so it's compatible with hundreds of different straps but you need the tools to change it. Uh, the longer dive strap is created by this extension that comes in the box with the dive computer. And in last place is the eye dive from ratio. The nature of the strap means it doesn't lie flat and from what I can see you can only swap the strap out for a few colours that are already in the range. Whether I'm setting up before a dive or navigating menus during a dive, I want ease of use. I don't want anything that I can get lost in. Essentially, all four of these dive computers will give me the same menu options. It's just really determined on how many buttons I need to push to get to where I want to go. We've got the Sinto D5 here with three buttons and we've got the Garmin Descent that has five buttons. If I was pushed for the sake of scoring, I'd probably put the Terek in first place. 
The four button system is idiot proof and easy to use. It's all very clear and precise and as seeing as it's an advanced technical computer I didn't once get lost in the menus. There's a small icon next to each button telling you what to do which I loved and why it's in first place. The Sento D5 sits in second. The three button configuration is super simple to use. The middle button is to select, a long press on the middle button will take you back through the menus and then the up and down buttons will essentially take you up and down through the menus. The ratio eye dive colour easy sits in third place. The four button configuration and menu navigation is very similar to the other two. There are small pictorial references to what you're selecting which is nice, but what I wasn't keen on was the dated feel of the graphics. I wasn't keen on the way the information scrolled away when you went to the next value. It reminded me a little bit of an old fashioned computer game screen. I put the Garmin Descent in last place purely for the amount of information you need to go through. Remember this isn't just a dive computer. If you want a dive computer that can tell you how many steps you've done cross country skiing then great, this is for you. I did get lost a few times with the five button configuration. If it was clear what each button did, that would be so much easier. Uh, and I do think that if you was only using this dive computer, you'd obviously get familiar with it, so it would be a little bit better. Whether you're old school like us or still write out a log, or whether you're down with current technology and use something that's app-based, keeping a record of your dives is really important. I know a number of divers that don't bother anymore, but on our recent trip to Antigua, the dive centre was insistent that we produce the logbook for them to see, otherwise we'd need to do a refresher review. Now, all dive computer logbooks are all very similar and give you the same information, but how easy are they to view? For me, the D5 gets top spot. It's easy to navigate and it's easy to get the information you need with the least amount of buttons to push. When using a transmitter you can clearly see your start and end gas and also your sac rate and I found the chart is really clear. There's not much to call in it but the Terek goes second. Similar to the Sunto, it's easy to find and I like the way you scroll across rather than down to see each value. The Garmin Descent sits in third place although there's not really a lot to call in it. What I do like is if you're using multiple gases you can see when you switched. And I like the calorie count, although I'm not sure how effective it would be through a thick wetsuit or a dry suit. Just to call out, it's not showing any calories burnt here, as I've had the DC on the rig in front of the camera. Really worth calling out the GPS maps. I really like this touch as it shows where in the world the dive site was, and you can view the map with a distance key of 20 foot right out to 500 miles. I've put the ratio last as you need to go into the dive mode to find the logbook as it's not on the main page of menus. It's easy to find when you know where, but when you do get there the values and chart are really small. The last category I'm going to score is what I've called gimmicks and extras. Now at the end of the day, these are dive computers, we want them to keep us safe during a dive and bring us back at the end of the dive without incident. But we all like little things, little gimmicks and uh, bits of technology that we haven't seen before on other dive computers. Now just to be clear, these extras don't have any bearing at all, at all on these computers as dive computers, but there's a few things that I did want to call out. The Garmin gets top spot. This is an app based smartwatch. And once connected to your smartphone, you can read text, emails, answer calls, see your step count, calories burnt, it's got a barometer, you can see your altitude. With the GPS and map function, you can navigate. And with the various based apps, you can track progress in a number of different sports and activities, from golf to mountain biking to stand up paddle boarding. You can control the music plan on your phone and there's even a cool find me phone function that's a bit like the kids game of hot and cold when trying to find something. There's a lot of customization options even just for the watch face alone. Honestly this will provide hours of fun. The Terek gets second spot purely on the different options of watch screen face. I'm also totally in love with the charge cradle. When on charge, the screen turns 90 degrees, so it makes a great little bedside clock. Also, because the Terek has a wireless charge capability, it's compatible with QI wireless charge plates, the same that you would use with a wireless smartphone. This means that if you have one of these pads, you don't need to take the charge cradle when traveling. 
The ratio drops into third place, but does have a couple of really cool little features. On the main screen you can view the phase of the moon and the atmospheric and baromic pressure, and it has a basic weather forecast. These are a little gimmicky, but they're kind of cool. The D5 is a fantastic dive computer, but there are no bells and whistles. Does it need them? No, it doesn't, absolutely not. But I do like some of the features on the others. So they're the six categories that I was going to score on. As I said before, it's just a bit of fun. They're just the categories that I came up with. But let's look at the final scores. But before you take these scores and all rush out and buy something, there are a few additional bits of information that you should take into consideration. As of today, the 7th of July, the Cento D5 is the cheapest. Prices start at £545 for the silver bezel unit and £595 for the black. The ratio I dive colour easy sits at £549. The Shearwater Terek is £995 and the Garmin Descent Titanium is £1,149, although you can buy the same version in the silver but with a sanded strap for £899. All four of these dive computers will cover all of your recreational dive needs and they will allow for more than one gas mix to be used. The Shearwater Terek and the Garmin Descent will allow for closed circuit rebreather and also trimix diving, but if you're a recreational diver that's never ever going to go down that route, do you really need to spend the extra money on something that you're not going to use? When to be quite honest, the Cinto D5 and the Ratio I Dive Color Easy are more than sufficient and will cover everything you're ever going to need and more. The no dive limits on all of them are very similar, and actually for the shallow recreational diving of 20 metres upwards we did in Antigua, the D5 with its new Fuse 2 RGBM algorithm was giving me a longer time before I hit any limits. Size wise the order goes, the Terek is the biggest, then the Garmin Descent, then the Cinto D5 and then the Ratio I Dive Colour Easy. So something to bear in mind if you do want to use this in an everyday watch. But do take note that the actual screen size on the Garmin and on the Ratio were quite small, quite considerably smaller than the Terek and the Cinto D5 in terms of actual viewable screen. Depth rating wise, the turret will get you to 200 meters, while the other three will all hit 100 meters comfortably. Not that I expect any of you to be hitting that anytime soon unless something has gone horribly wrong. Now before I took these diving, I was absolutely in love with the Garmin Descent Mark 1, but I can't tell you how annoyed I was at the fact that it doesn't have air integration. For me that is an absolutely key and fundamental point on any dive computer these days. I've heard rumours that the Garmin Descent Mark 2 will have air integration. Let's also hope that it has a larger viewable screen. So my final word, if someone was really pushing me to choose a good recreational dive computer that doubles up as a watch, forget all the bells and whistles, then it would have to be the Cinto D5. If the battery was better, this choice would be even easier, but honestly, is it such a hardship to charge your dive computer every night like you do your phone? If someone was pushing me to choose the best dive computer that doubles up as a watch, then it would be the Terek all day long. I absolutely love the Descent, and I wanted Descent to be my favorite, but you know, it lets itself down on so many fundamental things and I think there's a few things that they really need to iron out, like I say, with the air integration and with the bigger screen before I go spending over a thousand pound of my money to wear it on my wrist. That's me done. If you're still here and watching, thanks for sticking with me. And once again, a big thank you to all the brands and businesses that have been kind enough to loan product to make this video possible. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click on that little bell icon to be notified when future videos are uploaded. If you like this video, please do give it a like and of course share it if you think anyone you know will be interested in seeing it. And as always guys, add your comments and thoughts below. If you've got any questions, We'll do our best to get back to you, but in the meantime, I will look forward to seeing you on the next video. Take care. Bye.